CatchCarry.com is taking you to the Estes Park Memorial Observatory, which was founded by Mike Connolly and his family. And Mike, I know you have a very extensive background as an engineer, working on projects such as the Hubble, Mars Curiosity, and currently Osiris Rex. So how does becoming an engineer and a love for astronomy come together? They complement each other. Uh, the engineering aspect is a result of the scientists wanting to study and explore new adventures and uh, you know all of the missions that I've worked on Hubble, MSLA which is Curiosity and the current one I'm playing with or working with is Osiris-Rex they all have a, a science background um, uh, the Osiris-Rex mission is to go out and hunt down a uh, an asteroid and study an asteroid and eventually bring back a little chunk of it so that we can see what the uh, initial solar system was made out of. When can we expect to see that asteroid? The launch is scheduled in 2016, that's OSIRIS-REx. It'll go flying out to this asteroid, it takes about two years to get there. This asteroid is what they call a near-Earth asteroid, so it crosses the Earth's orbit and it takes Two years to get there, it'll spend two years taking all kinds of measurements. At the end of that period, it reaches down, it gets to like 20 feet of the asteroid and sends a big arm down and grabs a chunk of it and puts it in the capsule, flies it back, and that takes another two years to get back, and then it lands on Earth. It'll be out in Nevada, out in either Nevada or Utah, in the Proving Grounds, and they're going to snatch it out of the air off a parachute and study the asteroid. And what about with Magellan? Okay, that Magellan obviously was obviously working in the thermal engineering mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, realm. Mm -hmm. So, what was one of the most memorable moments? Uh, well, Magellan was a uh, a spacecraft, a NASA program, to go and study uh, Venus. I worked on it for about six years. It may have been a ten-year project. We did the build and the testing and the flight of Magellan. It was one of the most successful NASA programs in a long, long time. It did all of the mapping, it did all of the science that they wanted to do, and frankly they were running out of things to do with it, and so they did, what they did was a controlled re-entry where they just let it gradually sink into the atmosphere and basically burn up. Just recently it was Curiosity, which was Mars, uh, the Mars Lander, MSLA, Mars Science Lab, which was later named the Curiosity. Last August when it landed was like seven minutes of terror, I believe that was the name of the thing. And it, it truly is, for the engineers that have worked on that for the last 10 years, uh, their whole mission boils down to this seven minute landing phase. And that's one of the most exciting portions of the mission. That was a first time only landing and it's coming in from uh, you know from space and it's going to go up to like 50 times the speed of sound and it's going to come stopping in midair and and you're holding your breath and for seven, it, minutes. For seven minutes that's a long time and uh, it worked perfect it was phenomenal now that we have the science end of it how does that work into creating the Estes Park Memorial Observatory it turned out my daughter, uh, Christian, who was living in Bertha, Colorado at the time, lived next to the Little Thompson Observatory, and she got myself and my son and our family involved in that observatory. So we went to the Little Thompson one night, and they did a star party, and they did the, uh, the star wall, as you can see here. They have one of their own. And we all thought, gee, what a great idea, this observatory. And there, a small group of amateur astronomers got together and built it for the community. And then I had the tragedy of my life. I lost uh, my son and daughter in a, in a motorcycle accident in 2005. And it came to my mind and, and my family about what we had seen in the observatory and how the observatory would really be a good memorial. We went to the school system and, and they, they were more than happy to accommodate us and they put us on the property. They gave us the property and uh, let us build. I think that one of the really neat facts about this place too 
is the story behind the telescope upstairs. Oh, yeah. Because it was sitting in a closet for yeah. 10 years at the high school? Yeah, the telescope, uh, it's actually 18 years old, and there was a gentleman here in town, uh, Mr. West, that had the telescope. So he, he gave it on to the school. The school, they put it up, I think, one time to check it out. Then they put it away in the closet for 10 years. And then I came up with this idea of the uh, observatory, and they thought, oh, we got a telescope. And I said, you got a telescope? And they said, yeah, you want it? And said, so, yeah. So we, that's what we are now using in our observatory. So. And for people that want to come check out the Estes Park Memorial Observatory and this dynamite telescope and see into the stars, what can they expect? Well, we have a couple of things. We have uh, open house nights, uh, usually once a month, okay, uh, and that's in conjunction with our Estes Valley Astronomical Society, which is a small group of astronomers that, that meet here and we set up the telescope. Then we have our website, which is angelsabove.org. You can go to the website and set up a viewing night uh, for you or your family, and uh, it's all donation-based. What happens there is myself or another volunteer from the astronomy club will meet with your party and take you up and do some night viewing. And uh, uh, we uh, typically it last a couple of hours, and uh, we we have real good dark skies here in Estes, so it's uh, you'll get to see some really cool stuff.